So, dodgiest cut ever. I didn't realize, but I think we're still doing this. I forgot, this is the only championship in the game that's five tracks in length. And when I get talking about metal, I just completely forget where we are and like, I'm not paying attention to what the fuck's going on. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So let's talk about metal again. Uh, weird, unpopular opinion, I guess. But my personal favorite um, Pantera song, a Pantera album, is Far Beyond Driven. I'm actually wearing the T-shirt now. It's an alternative artwork, actually. But um, Far Beyond Driven was always my favorite. Just has five minutes alone, shedding skin. Like, uh, was I Broken on that one, or was it on a uh, vulgar display of power? I'm not sure. Those two were my favorite. But actually, I kind of, like, really dug Far Beyond Driven a little bit more. Just a little bit more. That's becoming on there as well, doesn't it? And I'm not saying that I, like, hate the other one. Uh, or any of them, to be honest. But the ones I listen to. Uh, shit, who else was I going to talk about? So I was mentioning Priest, big fan of Priest, big fan of Motorhead, British, so obviously I listen to a lot of New Wave, obviously. Shall we change the subject to another genre? I was, uh, really got into punk at some point, and I went from zero punk in my life to loads of punk in like, I think it was 2017, 2016, 17, 18. And I just went, you know what, I'm just gonna listen to a fuck ton of punk and see what's going on there. And like, I you know, Chromags, liked Chromags, uh, Clash, very different punk. <laughs> um, Misfits, those guys were real big. And I think it helped me gateway into death metal a lot more having punk and understanding punk. If you get punk, you get death metal a lot easier than if you just go from what modern metal is today, which is actually quite a lot of production and quite a lot of like technical musicianship because that's the style at the time, at this time. High technicality guitar solos and great production value and all, like Virtuoso drummers everywhere, Dream Theaters, Trivium, Slipknot, these guys just doing ridiculous guitar solos the whole time. And like just being sick musicians, really. <clears throat> uh, and like punk is just like, it's very like on the fringe kind of like of, uh, it's like a very different attitude but death metal takes a lot of that especially bands like napalm death where the songs are very short and it's a lot of like fast aggressive stuff napalm death scum album is a really great album i liked it let's talk about my favorite cannibal corpse a skeletal domain is always going to have a lot of like preference with me. I really liked a skeletal domain. Really liked it. Because it was the first cannibal corpse I picked up. I also liked uh, Tomb. Is it Tomb of the Mutilated? Is that the one that has Hammer Smashed Face on it? Um, that's why I named my channel after. Uh, yeah. That shit, that was shit, that shit. That shit was sick, not that sick was shit. <laughs> that means something completely different. Uh, but yeah, punk, liked, liked punk. Listen to Gang of Four, Damaged Goods was pretty good. Dead Kennedys have been in and out of my playlist for my entire life. Holiday in Cambodia, uh, a lot of stuff like that, you know. Soup is good food, or soup is a good meal, I can't remember the full title, I, my brain just substitutes words. The Descendants, really like Suburban Home and a few others, tried to like Husker Du, and found out a lot of people don't like Husker Du, and was like, oh, okay, it's not just me. 
Blink-182 were very, like, when I was 12 and then never again, you know? Very like when I thought wearing Vans was cool and Green Day and Blink-182 came around the same time and I was like, oh yeah, small things, and then I was like, this is just male Avril Lavigne, fuck this. <laughs> Pose of shit. And then it was like, it's probably a bit unfair, but then like, every time Blink-182 came into the, uh, the front fold, it was, hey, they've cancelled a tour and refused to give refunds back. Because Travis Barker says, fuck you, he's injured, or he just can't be bothered, or like, Tom DeLong says, uh, oh, I don't feel like it right now, I've got problems at home, and uh, I'm not going to refund you. And it was just like, that kept happening, or that's all we were hearing. And that's all that penetrated into my life about Blink-182, and I was like, wow. Never mind. Uh, yeah, a lot of punk. Let's think of some other punks. I used to hang out at a punk bar because for some reason they had a punk bar in Qingdao. <laughs> so I used to hang out there and they used to play stuff like the Cro-Mags, Iron Regan, a lot of stuff like that. Uh, I can't remember a lot of them, but I was like, this song's pretty good, this is the shit. And uh, yeah, I really got into punk for a little while. Then, you know, Misfits still come back and forth. Unpopular opinion number 457. I liked the Misfit lineup when Danzig wasn't there. Don't mean I didn't like classic Misfits. Oh look, I won. I like classic Misfits. Who doesn't like Last Caress and Die My Darling and all that shit? Sick. I don't think, I, I just tune after tune after tune from classic Danzig. But like, dig up her bones and all that shit. Could be a completely different punk band, to be honest. And I would, I was just like, this is awesome, you know. Dig up her bones. Um, oh, descending angel, Helena. Uh, ashes, ashes. Uh, dust to dust. Yeah, dust return to dust. With the final words, I pull the switch. Return to dust. Dust, dust. That one. I like that one. Um, so we win. Two part of there, because I'm a dumbass. Uh, but never mind. Time attack. Heart attack. Profit. Let's kill ourselves. R2. Either the Desmo Sidichi GP7 or the Desmo Sidichi GP15. This one has a bigger number. I'm pretty sure we tried this one. Let's try the slightly smaller number. And still die. Yeah. Punk is good and it's a really good sideline if you get a bit sick of like straight up modern metal the way it is now where a lot of it is like... I like Disturbed. I really like Asylum. I really like Down With The Sickness. Like 10,000 Fists. But it's very like... I don't want to say safe but kind of safe, you know? It's not pushing, it's not, there's no screaming, there's no, like, it's really just what it is. Although stricken when I first heard it, just, yeah, that really changed my life kind of thing, and decadence and shit, and uh, Stupefy from the Downward Sickness album and all that, and that is an important band for me, I really enjoyed it, but <laughs> I wouldn't ever say Disturbed were on the cutting edge. They're awesome. They're a good, solid, like, this is a band. This is a big, heavy band with good songs, some great covers, uh, some great musicianship. They are not talking about murdering each other and screaming very often. It's a lot of, like, more kind of, like, you know, little less extreme. And, like, you know, that's all right. That's fine. But, like, 
that's kind of what modern metal is now. It's like it's more talking about how life sucks and they're feeling kind of sad about it than it is about like now it's time for the blades, <laughs> you know, like. And it's like you know you you need that sometimes, but like not everything has to be disturbed. Some things can just be like angry or like fast slammed vocals you know what i mean it's just like sometimes you just gotta have that and it's not a bad thing to have that sometimes sometimes you want to have that and i think it's important to understand that that stuff's variety you know you gotta have that variety i'm dead variety got me killed but yeah, I just, I'm one of these guys that just fades in and out of various genres. I was listening to reggae for a while, really got into Pete Tosh. Around the same time I got into Typo Negative, so that was a very weird space to be in. Um, yeah, I got into golf and kind of that stuff like Typo. Uh, Sisters of Mercy, I really had a revival with me around that time, so there was a lot of golf punk kind of stuff going on. Yeah, typo, uh, who the fuck else? My brain is collapsing in on itself. Yeah, no, my brain's just dead now. Oh well. A lot of Danzig in that period as well. Really like Danzig's music, like his solo work. It's very different, it's very bluesy sounding in his voice, it's very moody. It's like if you took the doors and just brought it down three more notches and like songs like Tired of Being Alive and Devil's Plaything and her, Under Her Black Wings. The Lucifuge album, Lucifuge, Lucifuge, <laughs> Lucifuge, <laughs> that album <laughs> was like a big part of my life for a long period of time, long way back to hell, all of those. Sick album. Then I went back and listened to the first album again, semi, about three years ago now. Uh, Am I Demon and The Mother and all of that stuff. And I was like, yeah, this is good too. But like, I really liked Danzig too. <laughs> I forget how to speak. Uh, yeah, that was pretty sick. Um... Who else? Yeah, I went through this kind of period where I started experimenting with other genres and it was basically reggae, ska, punk, golf. Kind of like, some cases kind of like adjacent genres and in some cases really not adjacent. Been a big fan of some Latin music for a while, like, uh, Obviously, the stuff that like a lot of people who aren't into Latin music know, like Rodrigo y Gabriela, Buena Vista Social Club, uh, also Nova Lima. I was into some stuff like that, and I was really like, oh, I need to learn Spanish guitar, and I learned a bunch of Rodrigo songs, uh, uh, Rodrigo y Gabriela songs. I was like, yeah, this is fun to play, and it's nice to have another genre which is fun to play at a technical level as a guitarist that isn't just blues rock and thrash metal and death metal. Because, <laughs> like, basically, here's all the technical shit, and it's, like, shred. <laughs> like, I was a big fan of Paul Gilbert when I was playing guitar a lot. Paul Gilbert, Buckethead, Joe Satriani, Steve Vai, Ingwe Malmsteen, those guys, they come across a lot, and you're like, oh, that shit's really cool. And people are trying to get me into like the new flavors of the week, which tend to be like now it's Angel Vivaldi. Uh, before it was Michelangelo Batio. 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 <laughs> that guy. And everyone was like, oh yeah, you know, but like it was always for me, Paul Gilbert was the guy for me. He was the guy who was like, oh yeah, that's where I learned string skipping. And I was like, yeah, that shit's sick. It sounds so fast. He does some sick shit on the guitar. Technical Difficulties was just a great album. Although I don't remember. It's Fuzz Universe, I got the t-shirt. That whole album's pretty good. 
uh, get out of my yards good. Silence followed by a deafening roar. I could probably say change my life as a guitarist. Buckethead King. Uh, oh god, Crime Slunk's theme. The one with uh, Soothsayer and King James on and all of that is really great. Fairy and the Devil. Uh, Albino Slug as well is pretty good. There's loads of Buckethead stuff though. You could just. I had a hundred songs of Bucketheads and I didn't even scratch the surface. That guy releases stuff all the time. He released an acoustic album uh, which had like a load of stuff on it like that I was just like this is amazing. I can't remember what it's called like something of tears I want to say. It was like orange and blue on the front and it had like way to heaven and uh, uh, all in the waiting and a cover of a Spanish acoustic guitar called something for Miles. What was it called? That one. I won. Um, yeah, that's Buckethead's awesome. Satriani is really popular with me. Surfing with the Alien was like a big hit. Love and Warfare by Steve Vai, big hit with me. Yeah, that's more shred. That's a real niche subgenre. If you, I went to some. I saw Paul Gilbert live, and I watched a load of stuff. And you look at the crowds in these, and it's a bunch of men like me with beards who clearly play the guitar, not moshing or anything, and just sitting there and going and watching him play. Same with Dream Fit, to be honest. I saw Dream Fit live at High Voltage. And they played the one of the the song before the encore was Count of Tuscany, and one of my mates turned to leave halfway through the solo, and I was like, I ain't leaving. <laughs> I'm staying here, bitch. <laughs> That's R2. Should try this one with the same bike, because that one tried to kill me last time. Yeah, that was fun. Uh that's Shred. People who just want to hear pure technicality and want to get those silly lyrics out of the way and just want to hear sick technicality for hours, listen to that. Listen to Paul Gilbert's other work as well, of course. I tried to like Chicken Foot as well, which is Joe Satriani, Sammy Hagar, and Chad Smith, and uh, Michael Anthony. It's fine, it's just, it's just feels like it's something they did together when they were bored one time, you know? It just doesn't feel like there was loads of it. It's not Black Country Communion. It's not, um... Who the fuck was I listening to? Well, Mr. Big themselves are kind of a super group, aren't they? Um... Yeah, it's not... It, it doesn't feel like that. It feels like they were just doing it and they were like, la la la, let's have some fun. And it does feel fun. But it doesn't feel like... Oh my god, guys, Chicken Foot, the biggest new band. It just feels like, uh, yeah, they got some hits. Well, they don't even have hits. They have some good songs. My Kind of Girl, Different Devil, they're good ballads. Uh, oh Yeah really stuck with me for a while. Soap on a Rope, Bigfoot. They got some good stuff. It's just, it falls under the radar, and it doesn't make me sit there and go, damn really want to hear Chicken Foot right now. I never really feel that way. Either. Sorry, Chicken Foot. I do with Mr. Big, though. <clears throat> Which was a band Paul Gilbert was in. Then when Paul Gilbert wasn't in with them, it was Richie Coatson, who I think was the Poison guitarist. I think. I can't remember now. Um, and then uh, they reformed with Paul Gilbert again, but the drummer recently died, so they're not going to uh, do much more now. They were good. I like Paul Gilbert, so I like them. Uh, Mr. Big were good. Racer X, I grabbed some CDs and I had to get them sent over from America. And I got uh, technical difficulties and... Um, Street Lethal, I think it was called, Street Lethal, and that's a, oh, Street Lethal's a fucking killer of an album. If you're listening to Priest, and then you listen to Street Lethal, the artwork fits in with them, and that sound is 
it's not the same, but it's similar, you know? It's not no it's not really like priest at all, but like it's it feels like it fits well with priest. You know? Just really good. There's some great tracks on there, Holland Fire. Which album Oh, the second album had Sunlit Nights on, which is still one of my favorite, like, kind of love ballad, kind of glam songs. That is so underrated. It is so underrated. It's really great. I really got into White Snake around that time. Well, actually, a little later. White Snake and Scorpions, as well, are big ballads for me. And I really got back into Def Leppard after them being one of the first bands I ever listened to. Def Leppard made a big comeback. Uh, shouldn't ignore Motley Crue. Dr. Feel Good is a good album, but always more of an Alice Cooper fan. And uh, came to Rob Zombie very late. I've already seen them live two or three times. I was like, yeah, they're pretty good. And then I went back and I was like, nah, they got some really good tracks actually. They're like really like they're fun, you know. They're like fun in a kind of I don't know how to explain, kind of a sleazy fuck you kind of way where they're just like, yeah, I don't give a shit, you know? Really liked Hailstorm for a long time. Don't really like their modern stuff as much now. Um, oh man, I went for a huge phase, and a lot of my mates did, where Queens of the Stone Age were on downtime, I think, and then Crooked Vultures had been gone for a few years by this point. And, uh... <clears throat> We were all like kind of just listening to Eagles of Death Metal. Death by Sexy is a really good album. I don't mind Zipper Down. It's fine. Uh, Death by Sexy is really good and Heart On is good as well. I really like that. Al those albums and I just kind of have them on quite a lot. Uh, yeah. Favorite Queens of the Stone Age albums I pretty much just like. Era Vulgaris, uh, Lullabies to Paralyze, obviously Songs for the Deaf doesn't, it's not, you know, it's not like you can really argue much with that for, uh, that album, it's got some good stuff on there. And uh, I didn't mind like Clockwork, but past like Clockwork I kind of stopped listening, so they had some good tracks on there, like If I Had a Tail, I Sat by the Ocean, stuff like that, so it's alright. I liked it. It had a nice sound to it, like uh, Keep Your Eyes Peeled and I Appear Missing was pretty good tracks. Don't know if I, I listened to the singles from the next album and I just didn't feel like it hit with me the same way and I was just out there like, but when's them Crooked Vultures 2 though? <laughs> like, you know, but when's that though? And like, last thing that was said about that in an interview, Dave Grohl said something like, it's kind of hard, you know, when your super groups a member of Led Zeppelin, a member of Queens of the Stone Age, and a member of Foo Fighters, because that's a lot of conflicting schedules. Like, yeah, Led Zeppelin don't do anything now, but like, not really anyway. But, you know, it doesn't mean John Paul Jones is just not busy. <laughs> like, you know, I'm sure he's got a lot of stuff going on. Or even if he doesn't, he's probably just like, eh, you <laughs> can just sit at home on John Paul fucking Jones. Not like he doesn't have money, I should think. Uh, yeah. To take a departure from this, though, and start talking about a completely different genre of music that came to me very late. Yeah, like, well, around the time I picked up Hotline Miami and Hotline Miami 2, and then Ruiner, so you can tell where this is going straight away. I never, except for Prodigy and a bit of Pendulum, ever listened to electronic music. I occasionally picked up a bit of Daft Punk, because, eh, Daft Punk's alright. It's alright. Like, he's got some songs that you're like, oh yeah, that's a nice song, it makes me feel happy. It's just one of those songs that, like, he's one of those artists that's in the, like, him and, oh, I like Fatboy Slim as well. <laughs> Man, Fatboy Slim's such a product of his time. But, like, he's alright. They're yeah, alright. It was never my favorite genre. Some of my mates were huge electronic music fans, and I was just like, eh, you know, and then it, like, some of it penetrated, and I was like, eh, and then, like, I was listening to Hotline Mammy, and I was like, oh, 
electronic music can be cool and dark sounding and evil sounding, okay, I'm interested. And that was when I started listening to Moon, Perturbator, Carpenter Group, and stuff like that. And I really just, that stuff goes on my, uh, you know, especially Perturbator, Scattle, and Carpenter Group, and Moon. Uh, stuff from Ruiner's soundtrack, like Skeletons and Sidewalks and Zamilska, that sometimes appears as well. I like that stuff, you know. Like, I really like that stuff. I think it's cool. Cool, I win. I win. Yeah. I really like the Perturbator tracks that have, like, singing on them. They actually work really well because it seems to be, like, pretty well thought out and it's not very common. Like, they've got a lot of stuff that's more instrumental and it's really good, but, like, uh, like, to be honest, you shouldn't be ignoring songs like Naked Tongues, uh, Sentient, Venger, Venger, Venger Bus. <laughs> um, yeah, some really good stuff on there, and, like, I was really enjoying everything I heard that was even from outside the Hotline Miami soundtrack, where I was just listening to it because I was like, yeah. Hotline Miami, because I got real obsessed with that game, because it's got such a vibe, man. Uh, the, uh, we just did this, but they want. Uh, oh, I lost that. Oh. Uh, uh, let's just try and beat. If we complete. Oh, so we're going to have to try and beat the bronze, shouldn't be too hard. The super sport. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, that's my music suggestions for a while. Who else? Oh man, I can't stop talking about Diamond Plate. Diamond Plate were good. I don't know what happened to them, but they were good. Um, let's talk about Thrash for a little while. Uh, Exodus, I just kind of happened upon from a Spotify playlist and then was listening to Toxic Waltz and uh, War is My Shepherd. That really, like, I really like the sound of War is My Shepherd. That Just that chorus is really good. I was like, oh man, they're pretty good actually, like, uh, Celtic Frost, like, was it Celtic Frost? Yeah, I think I like Celtic Frost, I'd have to check them out again. Uh, yeah, really liked Exodus, really liked Testament when I finally gave them a chance, and it really tells me a lot, it's like, don't just sit on bands going, oh man, if you can't remember what bands you're supposed to be listening to, like, you go, Man, I should listen to that band. Make a note of it on your phone in a note application. And when you have time, because if you're like me, you go onto Spotify or you walk into H&V and your mind just goes blank and you're like, fuck, what did I want? <laughs> so you just end up walking up and down the metal and death metal sections and the punk sections and the overall A to Z sections going, maybe it's here. I don't know what I'm looking for, but let's just, I don't know. Oh look, Santana, <laughs> you're just like, I don't know what I'm looking for here. You know, and you just kind of, um, yeah, kind of thing. I went for a big Led Zeppelin phase, way later than a lot of classic rock, and Rolling Stones even later than that, and was just like, yes. And it just really told me, and Rush as well, and it just tells me, make up your own mind with music as well. Your mates will say, oh yeah, that shit, I don't like that. You don't, they don't speak for you, man. And just because they like similar music to you, it's often varied enough that you're like, really? For example, like, I like Fear Factory. A lot of my mates were like, oh yeah, I don't like Fear Factory, they're too heavy, the shit. And then like three years later, they're like, man, have you been listening to Fear Factory recently? And I'm like, yes, three years ago. Same with Deftones. 
they, like I'm always just a little ahead of my friends in the curve because I'm just weird. And uh, nowadays, I, I think a lot of them got out of that stuff, so they're not really like even relating to me very much on that anymore. Uh, uh, um, yeah, so many bands I missed out on because I was reading about them in a magazine, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna listen to this band. And then I say, hey man, I'm gonna listen to this band, and they'd be like, oh, I don't like that band, this shit. And then I would just wouldn't give them a try. You know? And you're like, kind of regret it. In some cases, it was bands like Paramore. And I was like, oh, Paramore seem popular. I'm going to listen to Paramore. And everyone's like, no, don't listen to that shit. And I'm like, okay. And then I kind of stealthily semi-like Paramore. And I'm like, hey, man, I like Paramore. They're not bad. You know? Yeah, not my favorite though. Yeah, like I said, I'm not big into pop punk. They're kind of pop punk. Very pop punk. My cat's trying to steal an Oreo. No! No! No, don't jump on the laptop. He was trying. He's trying. So yeah, like, uh, trying to think of other suggestions. Uh, to be honest, there's a lot there. <laughs> These past three, four episodes. <laughs> Man, I could just sit and recommend metal all day, all the time, and never run out of new bands to suggest. Like, I've been listening to some other stuff. Uh, Dead Soul. I really like Dead Soul. Uh, Kill the Past, if you want to go listen to a random Dead Soul song. Uh, that's just so much, man. Uh, I played Death Stranding and started listening to Low Roar, and that brought me back into Anathema. And, Anath and uh, oh, Pain of Salvation, because it's like the same kind of, kind of bleak kind of sound. And I was just like, dude, if you want to make yourself depressed, go listen to Anathema. Porcupine Tree, Pain of Salvation. <laughs> My cat's deciding to wreck shit for attention now, hooray. Um, yeah, that shit's really good. Um, you know, again, very different from what I just mentioned before. Uh, yeah, man, I could just go on about that all day. Oh, what was that band called? Was it Dead Temple or Death Temple? They were alright. Oh, and fucking hell, there's some stoner bands that I was listening to recently, you know, like Doom. And I was like, oh yeah, this shit's sick. And for the life of me now, I can't remember their names. Which is very unhelpful. I've got the album artwork saved. I'm going to look it up after this race. And I'm just going to recommend some real obscure-ass bands. Oh, Grieve Miasma. They're probably not actually that obscure. <laughs> I'm just like out of the loop. Vail Attack were good. But I think they've quit now, haven't they? And I also saw uh, Truck Fighters live. That was sick. Uh, Orange Goblin are good. Hello, cat. What do you want? I'm just jumping on my face. No. No, I want my face. Uh, yeah, Truck Fighters, Vela Tuck are pretty good, Orange Goblin are good, they're not that obscure, just kind of known in that group. Uh, kind of similar to Crowbar, but not, it's like Stoner and Doom and Sludge kind of get all mixed in. Baroness is pretty good, really like the Purple Album and the Blue Album, Green and Yellow are pretty good as well. Didn't really ever get on with red, but like, I didn't really get much chance. And Golden Grey, I listened to it once and was like, oh, okay, and then never listened to it again. But, oh, I see what they're doing. Turned it off, never listened to it again. <laughs> Don't know why. Need to go back and listen to it, I think.
yellow and green. I really liked yellow and green and purple. <coughs> then, no, I just really like them. I don't know why. I think it just came to me at a certain time. Where the fuck's my phone? I moved my phone. Ah, it's here. Let's look at the albums and tracks that I forgot that I was like, yes. Probably at the top now. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, Grave Miasma. They were pretty good. Or a Noir, and it was Dead Temple. That Swedish, I think, band I was talking about. The album's called The Somber Lane. Dissection. Dissection. I liked Dissection. Uh, they're kind of like... Well, they're very death metal, but like I don't know how to express it. They were, they were alright. <laughs> I'm really great at this. I liked them, they were alright. But you know what I mean. Uh, let's just get this and then we 100%ed it, you know? And then we can quit for the day and we can all go home and listen to death metal. I like this 900 Super Sport. It's just a shame that nowadays I reckon there's probably only so many working examples and I'd probably bankrupt myself even looking at one. Looks so pretty. I love that style they had, you know, with the, like, the two-tone lines and the, like, the way they spelled out Ducati. That's kind of making a revival with a lot of Harley Davidsons uh, when I last looked. Uh, with the fuel tanks, with the different, like, bars of color, very 80s and late 70s style like this. And uh, I kind of dug it, but, like, don't know if it's enough that if I was to customize my own bike, I would make it, the, you know, I got plans, you know, I got plans for liveries and all sorts of shit. I draw a lot. I draw a lot of tattoo, traditional Asian, Asian tattoo designs, mostly Japanese in origin. And I just kind of copy and just practice and practice and practice drawing like skulls and de onis and like um, dragons and tigers and snakes and uh, chrysanthemums and like all that stuff like uh, <laughs> and ghosts, you know, the, the auspicious clouds and things and like stuff like that and just again and again and again. So I was like, you know what I'm going to do if I ever have the time and money and know a guy who can actually paint the fuel tank without me having to do it, do like the lacquers and stuff, uh, or whatever, like the layered paints, is like, get it like primer painted or painted black, preferably painted black, I think, and then just get like a white detail brush that I can, you know, like white paint and detail brush and just draw some like demon or a like serpent all over the fuel tank in white and then get like a finish done on the top afterwards you know and just have all the scales done and shit like a real nice tattoo design on a black background with white uh detailing and like you know that would be the fuel tank and i got this great idea like that for it or like one where it's just a simple black one with a little demon insignia on the front uh by the fuel cap i mean where you can see it on top uh, but like, you know, I don't know how easy or difficult that is. I haven't really looked into it. All the YouTube channels I see is like, oh yeah, it's really easy. And then they go to a place. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, I know this guy. Do you know this guy? And it's like, no, I don't have any contacts. And I don't live in the UK or the US, so which is where a lot of the YouTube channels are, so. Yeah, I've got some plans. Big plan. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm fourth. You gotta kill some peoples. Pulls out gun. Yeah, so I think we can conclude all of my recommendations for the day. I've got a whole list up on my fridge, and it's just band names that I saw at festivals that I never actually got around to, like, checking out, like, Equilibrium and stuff like that. I was drunk as fuck when we were watching Equilibrium. Um, barely remember what they sound like. I was just like, yeah, <laughs> the whole time. 
Uh, and I just go through and go like, I check my old band shirts and I basically go through every uh, poster that I see and just check every band out basically as they get announced. If I'm going or I'm considering going and I'm like, oh, who's Sleep Token? I will check out Sleep Token. And I'm like, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> That's basically it. That's the whole conversation. Uh, you know, like stuff like that. I checked out Ice Nine Kills that way and kind of regretted it. I don't like Ice Nine Kills. Just don't like them. They're one of the first bands in a long time that I just sat down and was like, wow, I do not like this band. Like, I normally go, yeah, they're all right. You know, I just didn't like them. Sorry, guys. <laughs> if, if Ice Nine Kills himself is listening. <laughs> Yeah, I just went through and I just, every death metal band, every metal band, every band that I never got around to looking at, I just went through them all. So, you know, that's fun. Still got a load though, like, bands called things like Carpathian Forest, Heathen, uh, I did check out Flesh God Apocalypse and was like, the fuck is this? My mate sent me Igor. I listened to them. Very strange. But it's fine. I kind of liked it. It's just... Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. What else was I... Let's not talk about music for the final lap. If there's... Ugh. So, yeah, like... The big thing about having a cat, <clears throat> the big thing you notice about having a cat is so many more girls talk to you when you have a cat for some reason. It's really weird. Like, girls talk to me a fair amount here anyway because I'm seen as strange and different and weird and potentially quite wealthy and eccentric because I'm British and there aren't very many white British guys, especially not white British guys in the 20s around here. So a lot of girls are like, hi, are you wealthy? But like, my cat gets way more attention than I do. Like, and my mate was saying, my Chinese friend was saying, oh yeah, like he got a cat. And then he bought another cat. And then he got a girlfriend and he's now married to that person. <laughs> within very, within a year. And it just all went bing, 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 bing. Done. Sorted out. And he was like, yeah, she really loves the cat. I was like, obviously. <laughs> I was like, I'm pretty sure she likes you too. And he's like, yeah, but like, the whole reason she ever came home with me or ever hung out with me and stuff is because I have a cat. And she was like, you, like they, I think it's like, it's more like they use it as an excuse because it's, you know, hard to just say, can I go home with you? But if you say, can I go home with you? Oh, yeah, um, you have a cat? Oh, I want to go meet the cat. I want to go play with the cat. It, and then it's like, I'm at home with you then it feels a lot less like the, the pressure's off, you know? Maybe? I don't really know. <laughs> that guy nearly tried to take second from me again. Uh, first from me again, maybe second. Yay! We got so many gold circles. Chocolate coins. We got lots of chocolate coins. That's what they race for in this game. Yeah, the weirdest man. And like, it, like so many girls I talk to are like, I have a cat. Oh yeah, that's cool. I wonder if our cats would be friends. I'm like, no, my cat hates everybody. And like, they're like, your cat's so handsome. We love your cat. Oh, can we see a picture of your cat again? Can I meet him one time? And you're just like, you know, he, he gets way more attention than I do. It's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> but yeah, it's that whole thing of like, uh, you know, not really sure, because I don't like just having people in my house that I've only just met, you know? It's like a thing with me. It just makes me feel a little uncomfortable, so like, uh, you know, I don't really like people like in my personal space, so I'm always a bit like, nah, man, but like, it feels like it's like, you know, like, oh, you're in my personal space, hello. Oh, this one. Oh, let's do another overtake. Let's just do another overtake. 
this is running like 15 minutes too fast because I'm like, yeah, let's just do another one. <laughs> We're so close to 100%ing the first three uh, sections of this game. I would say eras, but the first is called the beginning and the last one's called victory, so... I need to be doing other shit, really. <clears throat> yeah, he gets way more attention than I do. Way more attention. Thank you, babe. He doesn't even know it. They all think he's super handsome, and I'm like, oh, you know what? You're handsome. And he's like, what? Very, he's a very odd cat, man. Oh, all cats are odd. Yeah, very strange. And there's this one girl lately who just like, she didn't really get the hint <laughs> that I'm like, not really interested. I get this a lot. Like, you know, guys are always like, you always hear guys say the same thing. And it's always like, it's always like, oh, I wish more girls talked to me. Oh, yeah, I wish more girls were interested in me. No, you don't. You really don't. Because it's not just the volume of girls. You want girls that are suitable for you to be dating, or girls that you want to, you're attracted to, or girls you have stuff in common with, or, you know, whatever gender partner you want, of course. <clears throat> but, like, um, it's really, like, the amount of people that I talk to, and you're just like, you're really just a friend. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're not ugly. They're not bad looking. You just, you know, you know, you're not attracted to them in that way, or you're just like, oh, they're all right. You know, they're my mate, or I work with them is a big thing with me. It's like, I don't, I, I, ne I can never get workplace relationships to work in a way that's sensible, so I just gave up on that. And like, uh, you know, sometimes there's a personality mismatch, you know, and that kind of thing. You just like, gonna work out, you know, and you're just like, it's fine, we're just friends, and you, you never really saw them as anything other than that, but like, um, you get some weird fucking propositions from girls in this uh, line of work and this kind of location, and it's just like, uh, <laughs> you know, some of them, you're literally saying to them, I'm not planning on staying here. In fact, I'm looking at jobs abroad right now. And they're like, so, do you want to hang out sometime? And you're like, just killed myself. That was my answer. <laughs> um, yeah, and... Uh, yeah, it's just like, yeah, we can hang out, and, she, you know, it just feels a bit, like, awkward, and you, like, you, you kind of know that they're interested, but you don't really want to lead them the wrong, you know? Oh, come on. Oh, I'm not going to meet the next one. Oh. We got one more thing out of that. One more chocolate coin. God damn. Oh, let's just cut it for tonight. I don't need to talk about my weird nom anything. Proceed. Proceed to cat. What are you doing, cat? I think that's enough. I think that's more than enough. I've been elking like crazy lately. 